Hey there, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Hopefully you're all doing excellently. I know I certainly am. Uh, even though I probably feel like I shouldn't because my sleep was kind of eh, you know, my sleep was a bit meh. So you wouldn't expect me to be feeling as good and energetic as I am, but I am feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty energetic. And I am ready to go with some suzerain. So I do apologize for the bit of a uh, delay in today's stream. Uh, always unintended, but uh, I figured it was for the best, right? Sometimes you got to start a little bit late. You know, sometimes it happens, right? I don't think anyone can really blame me. Uh, especially since I like to think I've been doing pretty good lately with that. All right, so let me move the mic just a smidge. I want to do it so the arm's not in view, but still close enough to the point where I can be heard nice and clear. Uh, and I'll be honest, I'm still kind of experimenting with quite how far away I can get from the mic without it sounding weird, right? Uh, come on, Cedrine. Oh. It's loud again. Hold up. I did uh, have a Windows update, so it did reset all my stuff, it looks like, which is fine. Hey, Bass Ackwards, welcome back to the stream. How are you doing today, friendo? All is going super, thank you very much. Uh, much better than I would think I would be doing, right? Uh, considering my kind of weird sleep last night, not bad necessarily, just kind of eh. You know, could have gotten more. Went to bed a bit later than I intended because I stayed up late doing a couple things. Um, so I got less sleep than one would normally like. But, eh, you know, it's whatever. It's fine. That happens, and I'll be able to catch up uh, over the weekend, possibly. I don't know. Depends if I'm heading out this weekend. Which I might be. Uh, we'll have to see on that one. <clears throat> but how are you doing, my dude? Hopefully all is well on your end. All right, so when we last left off with our boy Anton Rain, we attended the funeral of um, Bernard Circus, I believe, who is, well, was the head of the Communist Party. And yeah, you know, that was really good. That was a really good scene. So let's read up on the news and see what the news has to say. Now, right, here we go. Ah, this is what I said. Let's see, Bass Hacker says I'm doing all right. Gonna be making teriyaki meatballs. Mmm, tasty. This might be bit in and out. Perfectly fine. Yeah, sleep is important. And I honestly, I kind of feel like I haven't gotten as much as I should lately. But I've also been sleeping in a bit later during the day on some days when I really shouldn't be. So, eh, you know, it's, it's my mistake. It's my, my fault. I, I've been kind of fucking up with that. And it's now... Well, I've now made my bed and I'm, I'm laying in it, as it were, you know, in not the literal sense, because I'm not exactly laying in my bed sometimes. Well, I don't I don't lay in my bed enough like when I should, I guess. I don't know. Now, now, now I'm sounding now I'm not making sense. Anyway, read the news. Sleep is important, though, everybody. Everybody get your sleep when you can. Don't stay up too late. Don't be like me and make mistakes. All right. Our only strength is the will to survive. Huge crowds of mourners, including President Rain and other senior Swordish officials, joined for a rare display of unity, poured into the heart of Dare today to bid farewell to Bernard Circus, the poet and politician who was shot and killed at the gates of the Maroon Palace after Rain's inauguration ball. Hold on, I think I'm like one notch too high. I think that's good. Uh, with hundreds of police officers and riot gear on duty and traffic barred on major thorough, 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 thoroughfares, the normally chaotic section of the city took on a somber atmosphere. Millenniumist anthems played from loudspeakers along Freedom Avenue as Swordish citizens of various ethnicities stood shoulder to shoulder, many of them in tears. Others leaned out windows or over balcony railings to watch the procession. President Rain gave a unifying message to all of Swordland by attending the funeral. He paid his respects to Circus and met with his close relatives. Rain also made an emotional speech that touched thousands of attendees. He finished his speech with a quote from Circus. 
Our only strength is the will to survive. Knowing that we will perish, knowing nothing more, absolute. I cool. Well, I, you know, it seems like it, it got uh, a good, good, uh, how do I want to put it? It, it, this basically did what I wanted to, and that is it made us seem unified, right? It made us seem quite unified. Uh, Bernard Circus's funeral was held in Dare today among thousands of attendees. President Rain drew criticism when he agreed to attend the funeral while the decision was not totally out of the or wait. Okay, no, I, I, I that thought it was a comma again. President Rain drew criticism when he agreed to attend the funeral. While the decision was not totally out of the ordinary, the fact that Rain is giving support to a known member of Red Youth who promoted millennialism throughout his life is unusual. Because it's not politics, Swordland, today, it's uniting the people. Come on. I know I'm a politician, all right? I get that. But, <clears throat> you know, you know, this is this is a, just like real life. I'm willing to bet that if I didn't attend this funeral, they'd be like, uh, president didn't go and attend funeral of politician, a dead politician. You know, they would say the exact same thing. I'm on to you, Swordland, today. Listen, pretty sure it's the Swordland today. We'll, we'll check just to make sure. Um, <clears throat> later in the day, President Rain was seen together with a group of Red Youth members, standing together and paying respects to Circus. Nationalists who saw Circus as a traitor heavily criticized the President's move, which will surely continue among the conservative wing of the United Swordland Party. Never would Saul have thought that his party would be led by someone who stands together with a communist who studied in the homeland of millennialism. That was right, it is Swordland today. <clears throat> yeah, uh, empathy has been politicized nowadays. It has been. It really has been. Everything's been politicized to some degree, and it's kind of sad, but that's politics for you, right? It's usually why I stay clear of politics. Like, don't get me wrong, I'll definitely say what my views are if people ask, but... <clears throat> yeah, it's not like I'm gonna... It's not like my views are radical or anything anyway, so, yeah. I doubt people would really care. Like, regardless. Uh, okay, so highway. I think this is the only thing we have left to do. Briefing on the current diplomatic situation, yes. So this is going to be very important. Very, very important for what happens forward. Because this is where we're going to need to get allies. Because if we can get allies, we can maybe stave off Rumberg, right? Staving off Rumberg is a big, big deal. The Blue Mansion in Lockhaven hosted us for the important diplomacy gathering. The door opened and David... Yeah, David. Wishy. Once a lecturer to me, now the Minister of Foreign Affairs, gently made his way towards my desk. Yeah, this is um a guy that we've... talked about before, right? Is a diplomat, ambassador, and politician who serves as the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade of Swordland. He became a member of the United Swordland Party in 1949 after Tarek and Sol's resignation. Beside his career, he is known by many through his father. Excuse me. Artur S. Wischi, the founder of the Republic of Swordland. He served the service of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 1923 and worked on many positions at various departments. Between 1925 and 1927... Rishi taught applied international law and disputes at the facility faculty of political science of Dare. Oh, yeah, that's where I studied. University of Culture in 1949. He was appointed ambassador to Stalport. David is still remembered for helping out what for helping out to 10,000 immigrants of Swordish and Bluish origin. While serving as consul general in Luko, Lesbia, in 1929. He became a respected name in the diplomatic scene in the Markian region. He's been promoting social democracy and human rights in Soiland for decades. David is also known for criticizing the United Soiland Party for oppressing the Bluish people, acknowledging the Bluish is issue, which made him a target for the Solus and the Nationalists. He eventually joined the party during Alfonso's presidency. Due to his connection to President Artur S. Wishy, David is still seen as a controversial member of the USP. He is known to be a nonpartisan and an opponent of Tarkin Soul's policies. Although he publicly criticizes his own party, 
He worked closely with Anton Rain and became the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade in 1953. So one thing I do remember from reading up on Swordland uh, in the game is that we have a really, really good um, diplomacy staff. Our diplomacy staff is really good. So we should probably listen to David here. Uh, gently made his way towards my desk. May I sit down, Mr. President? Leave the formalities aside, David. Please, take a seat. I mean, I do like David. He, he seems cool so far. And he did teach my character, so... He did teach my Anton. Alright, I'm still getting used to your new position, Anton. He slowly sat down, taking care not to aggravate the arthritis in his knees. I need to have a sip already. I can already tell my throat is getting a bit more shot for some reason. Probably because I've been reading this, right, so much. So I might need to take uh, extra sips every now and again. Uh, taking care not to aggravate the arthritis in his knees. He'd always had an air of gravitas about him, and old age had only served to deepen that. After he settled himself, he regarded me with delight his blue eyes sparkling. Look at you, Anton. The fourth president of Swordland. What a privilege for me. I still remember the first day you took my class at the Dare University of Culture. And remember how hard we worked on the Agnolia trade agreement together? Uh, countless late nights at the ministry to finalize. That was an experience for sure. We signed our best trade deal yet with a good slew of trade advantages over Agnolia. It was even somewhat unfair from my point of view. Somehow the inexplicable ebb and flow of life has led us here, to positions where we can change the course of history. Um... I feel like my Anton would lean more towards one. I feel like... Everything happens for a reason, David. It was meant to be. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't believe in destiny, but sometimes it feels convenient to do so. He started coughing again, this time for longer. Um, yeah, I don't know if I want to ask about his health, because what if he is just having a cough, just like me some days? Would you like some tea or water? Oh yes, please. Tea and water sounds nice. Thank you very much. He smiled. Livia brought two cups of tea along with a glass of water and placed them on the table. It seems you still remember how much I like tea. Nowadays, it really does wonders to my throat. Um... How's your health, David? I feel like I should ask, just to be safe. Oh, I haven't had any big complications except the usual. After that heart attack earlier this year. The health complications aren't a hindrance to my work, of course, but thanks for asking. How's the Rain family? Um... Are we slowly starting to get used to the routine? I think number one. I don't think I want to really talk... I, I don't think... Like, Monica is taking to it well, but she's, you know, she's not, like, she's not making, like, oh, yeah, I'm the first, I'm the first lady kind of thing, right? Which is what I assume this would be implying. Frank, it's true, he's not really looking in the spotlight, but, I mean, you know. But we're, we're slowly starting to get used to the routine, I think. As time passes, I realize it more. Family is the most important thing in life. We must take care of them. The door opened. Yosef and Lucian joined us for the briefing as the tall case clock. Yeah, as the tall case clock hit the hour mark. Peter, however, was missing. I wondered if he was late from all the drinking he did at the party in Lockhaven. We'll talk more later, President Rain. Welcome, everyone. How's your travel to Lockhaven? A little bumpy due to some turbulence. I arrived via a military cargo plane that landed at Lockhaven International. I took the train. It was a little slow, but I can still recommend it for the beautiful landscape. I also had the possibility to work on a couple of things during the ride. 
Well then, since Mr. Vector doesn't seem to be coming today, I think we're ready to start. Ugh, I don't know, doing this without Peter, I don't know. I will start by providing a brief overview of our current status with our neighbors. What would you like to start with? Uh, I, I, Agnolia probably is the place I should talk about the most, so I'd like to hear about Agnolia. Our brotherly nation to our northeast, Agnolia. They're so diplomatically non-aligned and probably has one of the most democratic systems, I presume. Between our neighbors. Economic stagnation is a worry for them. Their primary issue is their, heavily, their heavy reliance on foreign investment from us. Agnolia is our most friendly neighbor. We've been allies for the longest time after Rumberg annexed Dome. This fact needs to be part of the equation. Unsurprisingly, the Agnolian Prime Minister, Martin Van Horten, is expecting better cooperation through a new, fairer trade deal with us. It was one of his election mandates. Um... I mean, I feel like this is true, because I'm assuming by a more comprehensive trade deal, I assume it's talking about a more fair one. I want to make sure I'm actually getting that getting that correct. So, I want to I want to just like define because I don't want to go go making any any uh ohs anymore, uh, kind of like I did earlier by accident. So I just want to make sure I I know comprehensive define. No, not compressive. Wow, I misspelled that horribly. Comprehensive. Yeah, meaning. There you go. Complete, yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, that works. A more complete trade deal sounds beneficial to all sides. Both sides could gain from it, but Ignolia has more to win than us. They want to protect their weaker industries, which we are profiting from, selling our goods to. Additionally, the latest numbers indicate that currently a million Agnosordish citizens live in the Angland region of Swordland, which creates a link between foreign policy and our eternal internal affairs. These people have suffered socio-economically, which led them to crime and other problems. In addition, a relaxed immigration policy was one of Agnolia's main requests, which is unacceptable. Most of the migrants in our country haven't even assimilated into Swordish culture. Adding more won't help. I mean, I feel like I am sub okay. So legit, my Anton Rain would be would be number two here because he did help those immigrate immigrants when he was um uh, in the military. So I feel like he'd be supportive of relaxed immigration. I would rethink the matter seriously because it has great influence on our society and values. We should remember that we promised to keep our immigration laws relaxed in the election campaign. Yeah, that as well, right? Like, like that's important, right? Like, I feel like it makes a lot of sense. Guess, tell me about Wellen. What's the latest situation in Wellen? It is tumultuous in the south, as always. Wichter Smolak is expanding his powers among protests from Wizzik people. However, he is quite positive about a normalization of relationship between our countries. Reports indicate that they have been warming up to continent international aid. Ooh. As you know, Wellen's stability was always a concern for the region. But if we want to help them, we must not treat refugees like we did in the 30s. I still can't stomach the inhumanity of those people suffered. Um, I mean, getting a trade agreement with them would be good. Because, like, I mean, getting a trade agreement with all of our neighbors probably makes sense. Excuse me, like, they're disorganized, but I feel like it would be mutually beneficial. Because it's not like they're going to bring their problems with them through trade. I don't think that really happens. So a trade agreement with them would improve stability and increase mutual trade. There would be many bargaining chips discussed, but Wellen could be a new partner in the region. We would also invest in stability there. Yeah, plus, uh, plus this is something else too. We don't want them 
going towards communist influence, right? Because we can already see the, uh, was, it, was it called United Continent or whatever? Is very much trying to push uh, communism in the region. Because we can assume they're trying to put, they're trying to influence our people towards communism. So it sounds like they're doing the same thing with Welland too. So if we can help Welland, maybe we can curb that. At least against like radical communism, right? Our main goal should be to avoid a refugee crisis like the late 1920s. That civil war had major security and economic repercussions on Swedish soil. Yeah, one of the demands of President Smolok was to tighten our immigration laws so the political refugees don't skip to Swordland. Mm, there's been a recent purge that pushed many Bluetish to flee to Bergia. It is definitely troubling. Okay, that doesn't sound too great. Like a purge on Bluetish people? That seems not too great. So I can't tighten the immigration laws, no. Government outpost has regained its importance due to this. I'm sure you would remember that winter at the border outpost, Mr. President. He was right. I did remember that winter. I remembered how cold it was when I let the refugees slip through. I was discharged of my duties as a result by Major Josef Lancia, no less. Spending the rest of my service cleaning toilets and sleeping in a cell. In fact, there had been a similar refugee situation in the past. Even Mr. President himself chose to disobey direct orders from his commanding officer at the time. I did what was right. I'm not going to be bullied by my, by my, like, a member of general staff here. I did what was right. Soldiers do not decide on what is right. Soldiers do what they are told to do. Ooh, see now, now we're getting into a really interesting topic. Uh, nah, sometimes, like when it comes to, you know, humanitarian stuff, sometimes the commander can be wrong. He opened his mouth to continue, but David cut in. Our fo focus should be on the current matters. The Bluetish minority is very large inside Willen too, which is a factor to consider. It is in our national interest to prevent the formation of a failed state on our western border. Welland has been increasingly aligning, aligning itself towards the Communist Alliance, although another point to analyze. Yeah, tell me more about Volgsland. Um, our cousins of old across the Markian Sea wish to have good relations with us. As we all know, Volgsland is a socialist republic aligned with United Contana. They are an important uh, regional player. It's also the most significant sea power in eastern Rokopa. We had hostile relations with them after several years in the 19th century, which we wouldn't want to experience again. Recently, the relationship has warmed up thanks to Emmerich he Hegel. Hegel? Hegel. As a result, diplomatic talks can be conducted in the future. The Great Fire of Conrad. I should probably look that up just so I have more context. Great Fire of Conrad. So in the year of uh, 1789, the navy of the Empire of Volgos, encouraged by the Renan army fighting in Rumberg territory, sailed across the sea. During the first night of June, as many residents in Conrad were asleep, the fleet destroyed several patrol boats and got within a kilometer of the harbor. The Volgsland fleet, without any formal declaration of war, let loose a barrage at the Swordish main fleet anchored at port and sunk most of the navy. That's a war crime. Even before the sailors could get to their ships. Then the 80-ship strong fleet loaded incendiary shots and fired barrage after barrage towards the city for three days. That is uh, also a war crime, I believe. Uh, at least in our universe, I believe these would all be considered war crimes. The fire spread so fast that many people couldn't even escape their own homes and burned alive. By the time the Renan family had received the news, it was all too late. The strategically significant Swordish navy was destroyed, and the Renan army couldn't do anything due to the ongoing conflict with Rumberg. Records indicate that 90% of the city was destroyed that day. 
More than 40,000 people lost their lives, including 8,000 sailors who couldn't even retaliate. After this point, Valgos claimed sea dominance and the Renan Navy never recovered fully. Many Swordish citizens today regard this incident as the Great Betrayal, but the current Volksland government condemns the act and detaches itself from the acts of their previous government of Valgos. Yeah, okay, so, the, you know, they, they admitted it was wrong at least. And that was like, at this point, almost 200 years ago. Um... Um... I mean, breaking... I mean, I don't like the other two options, so I guess we'll go with breaking the ice with Volksland could be good if we were to rise diplomatically. I agree they could be potential allies, in my opinion. The situation in the region necessities that we find allies. Necessitates that we find allies. They haven't been in good relations with us for the past 200 years. Recently, they've also joined the Communist Continent Security Pact, subjugating themselves to United Cantana. On top of that, territorial issues flare up between Agnolia and Volksland because of the... Helgeland Islands? The Swedish Navy is very concerned with this volatile situation. It's always over islands. Why is it always over islands? Lucian looked very... Lo bleh, Lucian looked slightly worried, excuse me. Unfortunately, billions of Swordish Ren worth of cargo was transported close to Volksla Volkslandian maritime borders on the Markian Sea and the Grey Strait. This causes significant risks to our imports and exports in the case of a deterioration in relations. Uh, I mean, it sounds like it's of high strategic value. So the Strait is of high strategic value to us. Yosef, the Navy is keeping an eye on the situation from a distance, right? We are actively monitoring the sea routes and cargo ships. For now, there is no immediate threat. But we don't know what could happen in the future. Let's move on. Two important neighboring countries remain. Lesbia and Rumberg. Which would, like, uh, which would you like to hear about first? Well, we know shit's going on in Rumberg, so let's hear, let's hear more about Lesbia. What about Lispia? Uh, our southern neighbor is aligning itself more and more with Arcasia. Lispia is currently led by Prime Minister Patricio... Patricio? Probably Patricio Alvarez. So they're probably the ones we can get in with the easiest. They're the jewel of the continent and the second largest economy in Mercopa. Though wealthy, Lesbia suffers from econo uh, excessive economic inequality. Our past relations have been great, but during the last decade, their investments to Sardland dwindled due to our instability. Uh, I mean, number one is true. I do think allying with the richest regional nation could be beneficial. It could be, but it would also mean that we would draw closer to the Arcasia bloc and near the Arcasian Treaty Organization. Um, is an international government military alliance between 14 countries, primarily, so this is like NATO, primarily led by Arcasia. The alliance aims to bring all its members together in a united economic and defense framework against CSP. Yeah, so it is like NATO, basically. With ATO's strategic, I mean, it even has like NATO in the name, it just, it's just missing the N, funnily enough. It's ADO. Strategic military alliance have consists of countries with capitalist economic structures. Its aim is to counter the influence of United Cantana around the globe and protect Maricopa from the expansion of socialism. Recently, the ATO has become increasingly focused on increasing the nuclear protection as the new military weapon has advanced enough to become part of warfare. Okie dokie. So yeah, probably... I mean, this guy makes it seem like a bad thing, but I think it's a good thing to ally ourselves more towards Arcasia. I don't... I think it'd be good to join that alliance. I am certain that a recession has a lot to do with their attraction of investments. Once they see that money isn't in the picture, they vanish rather quickly because they are capitalists. They have shown a selfish attitude during the Welland Civil War by closing their borders and funneling refugees to cross into Swordland. Lucian cleared his throat. 
I mean, yeah, like if we want to fix the economy, let's let's go more capitalist. I really think that's the way to go about it. Uh, the capitalism of Lespia is inspirational to me. Look at their economic power. Everything comes at a cost. And Lespia, the cost is wealth and equality, but business people are getting richer and richer. There are hundreds of very privileged oligarchs who invest inside and outside of Lespia. Some made significant business investments in the cities of Benfi and Valgen. Hey Mario, welcome back to the stream today. How you doing, friendo? I don't know why I kind of said that out of order. Welcome back to the stream. How are you doing today, friendo? There you go. Uh, what is the situation in Remberg? It's not good. I know that much. Now to the most troublesome nation, Remberg. A constitutional monarchy led by Queen Beatrice Livingston. Nah, she definitely looks old-fashioned. So, Beatrice Livingston is the queen of uh, the Kingdom of Remberg and self-proclaimed ruler of all of Northern Mercopa. She's been the queen of Remberg since 1921, when she ascended to the throne at the age of 16, upon the death of her father, Alfred II. So, this is... Uh, she's very... You know, you can definitely see a lot of similarities between, like, the real world and this. Because it kind of seems like Remberg is, like, maybe a mixture between, like, Germany and, uh, the UK. Because they're a constitutional monarchy, but they're highly aggressive and expansionist. And they want resources, which I believe Germany did want back in the 40s. Um, and this one even ascended at the age of 16. And I think Queen Elizabeth ascended at, what, like, 18? I don't think she was 16. But she was really young when she ascended. I don't remember what age, though. And... Wasn't her uncle named Alfred? No, Edward. Was it? King Edward. Which one was King Edward? Was that her dad or was that her granddad? Or, or um, uncle, I mean. I'm pretty sure there was an Alfred in there. I could be wrong, though. Marius is back from work and oof history. Hey, history is one of my one of one of my strong points. All right. I can't remember who Edward and Alfred, I, Alfred are if there even is an Alfred. But, you know, but well, I'm saying Alfred. It's Alfred. My bad. After her coronation, she has resigned, reigned as a constitutional monarch through major political changes such as the centralization of power in the kingdom, secularization reforms, as well as the dissolution of the integration of the northern territories into the kingdom. Her most notable action was the invasion of northern Agnolia and the annexation of Dome, which was executed by the Rumbergian army in a single night. Once again, you know what? Also, also very reminiscent of World War II Germany, funnily enough. She was condemned internationally and was expected to pay reparations to Agnolia, which she rejected to do. She's like, no, nah. no, I don't want to. I want pay reps. No, rep no reparations, thanks. Remberg did not face any major repercussions for the annexation and the calls for reparations fell flat. It is regarded as one of the largest military and political victories of Remberg to this day. Beatrice gained infamy for selling weapons to both of the attackers and defenders during the Wellen Civil War. She also received numerous international criticisms for pursuing expansionist policies and was blamed by Arcasia and United Contana for playing both sides. So nobody... So the communists and the capitalists don't like them either. They're kind of on their own. Beatrice has occasionally faced uh, Republican sentiments and criticism of the royal family. In particular, after her reforms, which centralized the power in the kingdom, decreasing the authority of the parliament of Remberg. Mm, okay, so she's becoming a bit more of an absolute monarch. Marius is Ask River. I'm the worst at history. Perfectly fair. Not uh, history isn't everybody's everybody's bag, right? It's mine. I just find it really interesting. Speaking of Germany, I just saw the Actman's World at War video. The Actman's World at War video. You know, I don't think I've heard of them. Or I assume they're a YouTube channel, right? Since I have my phone here, let me do. So is it Actman's? Is it, is it the Act Man? 
Huh, all right. I'm gonna have to check them out later. Oh, the act man, yeah. Yeah, no, I have not heard of him. I mean, he seems like he does a lot of uh, pretty good videos. Decent length on stuff that I enjoy. Yeah, I'll give him a look sometime. Uh, I think it should be quite fun. Speaking of which, uh, I do like the World at War game. Call of Duty World at War, right? Pretty fun. Uh, really, really like it. By the way, if you ever loved Halo, don't ever watch the Halo TV show. So see, this is actually something that I've kind of wrestled with yeah, since it came out, funnily enough, because I want to watch it. But literally the next day after it came out, uh, another fr uh, friend and person I follow on Twitter, um, who, who is a big Halo fan, tweeted out that it was really, really bad and that it kind of spat in the face of the game's fans. And that made me really, really question it. So I was like, well, okay, I don't know if I want to do that now. So I've kind of just let it slide and I'm just waiting to see. I don't think, see, I'm, see I'm, I'm of two minds. I'm of two minds here. One mind is I probably shouldn't ever watch it. But then I have another mind of, well, if I can get into the mindset that it's its own thing, then maybe I can justify it, right? Like, I don't know. We'll see. I might watch it eventually, or I might not. Oh, it does fit down your face multiple times, especially the latest episode. It's oof. Going against everything the Master Chief is. Yeah, I heard they did the Chief really dirty in that. Which, uh, I, I, like, I didn't read anything specific. I just heard he's not really in character. Which makes me sad. But, I mean, you know... It's a shame. It's a shame. People have been wanting a Halo show for forever. And if they got it and they're not happy, then yeah, it's not going to be too great. It's not even hard to do. Like, see, that's the thing. And you could say, like, oh, no, adaptation's weird. Don't adapt, adapt the games. Adapt the books, if anything, right? Books are easier to adapt anyway. So, like, I don't know why they don't just adapt the books. The books would actually be great to adapt, to be honest. Because then you get what's essentially the first game and then stuff leading up to the first game. Stuff even, yeah, stuff leading up to the first game. The first game, I think stuff leading up to Halo 2 and then just a bunch of little other things, right? So, why don't, I don't know why they didn't just adapt the books. The books would have been really good for it. So, I don't know. Very strange. Hell, even, ha yeah, yeah, like... Like, yeah, why, don't, why didn't they just do that? That would have made a lot of sense. Now, the most troublesome nation, Rumberg, a constitutional monarchy led by Queen Beatrice Livingston. Uh, I will close this. I highly advise caution and calculated action against Rumberg. Our military must be prepared. The threat is real. Well, trust me, Yosef, I know. They are strong and have the motivation, as well as the means, to damage us. We shouldn't give them any reason to pursue aggression. Um, hmm. Excuse me. Um, I think we must prevent them from interfering in our affairs. This is probably the one the one nation that i'm gonna not be hostile towards but very very cautious with and one that i'd probably rather keep a distance so we, mu we must prevent them from interfering in our affairs they have shown similar behavior to their neighboring countries before but we must be cautious while thornburg openly i think it's thornburg openly denies such claims their past and current actions make it clear that they want to destabilize us the weapons cache is found by our intelligence agency clearly shows that the, what their goals are. Our military must be steadfast and our diplomacy valiant. Yosef looked stern and full of resolve. The Remberg threat is one of our top priorities, you can be assured of that. That is definitely my stance. We are always in dialogue with our Remberg ambassador to make sure a channel is open to solve disputes. We could use their aggressive attitude against them by convincing the international community. 
Lucian grabbed the Lockhaven Times newspaper and put his finger on the article about the latest diplomatic incident. Their abrupt announcement about the closure of the Umberg Consulate in Lockhaven is yet another step in their escalation. This covers the overview of the current situation. We'll move on to our trade choice and the response to Rumberg's diplomatic escalation. The sun began to set over the mountain or over the hills surrounding Lockhaven. The team was ready to give advice on the new trade initiative and the response to the latest diplomatic incident with Rumberg. Peter arrived late and a little rougher than usual. It must have been the drinking from last night. Why is my nose so itchy? Why is my nose so itchy right now? Uh, it's worse than any fan fiction with Chief X Cortana. It's just not Master Chief. Also, Frank, you seem like you'd like Frostpunk. Uh, yeah. Uh, funnily enough, I did play a little bit of Frostpunk. So, actually, fun fact, I'll give you guys a little a little look into something I had planned a long time ago but never actually went with. Uh, I was originally going to do a stream of Frostpunk a long time ago when I found out about it. Uh, then I found out the game's actually really, really hard, and I was like, I don't know if they'd want to see me struggle with Frostpunk for so long. So I still have it. I still plan on playing it sometime. But if I play it, it might be either just on my own time or as like a recording probably. But it does seem really fun. So you'd be right. Uh, I do seem like I'd like Frostpunk because I'm pretty sure I like it, even just based on the little bit I, I did play. I can make some amazing videos. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to check them out. Why is my, why is my nose in like, forehead itchy right now it's weird it's always only on stream too guaranteed the moment the camera goes off itchy gone completely removed right and not even like before camera even went on itchy not there camera on suddenly my nose is itchy my forehead's itchy i don't get it it's weird how that works also my upper lip but i think that's because of my my mustache hairs Hey there, folks. Excuse my delay. I'm sure I didn't miss anything we didn't already know. You were still supposed to be part of this meeting, also on time. Punctuality is important. We are talking about serious subjects here. Uh, do I want to discipline Peter, say nothing, or cover up for Peter? I think in this regard, we should discipline Peter a little bit. They have a point, Peter. We should have discipline in the cabinet. Excuse me, it won't happen again. Lucian and Yosef looked at Peter before David moved away from the subject. The vice president will be part of the trade delegation, so it is great to have input on that subject, but also on the Rumberg incident. There are two issues at hand. Which topic should we tackle first? Address the diplomatic incident. Rumberg Consul Sir Bran Harrington announced the closure of the 120-year-old consulate. Now their diplomatic staff is leaving the city to go back to Thornborough. Probably Borough, yeah. He blamed the lack of security in Sorland due to the assassination and the subsequent protests, but it is obvious that they are making excuses. Bastards. First they close their consulate and then they blame our security? Um, it's probably them that's causing it. So I actually think the security situation is under control. They're playing with us. I do think that's actually true. Isn't it telling when our other countries are working with us while well, Rumberg is just cutting more ties with us? The neglect of President Alfonso and the chaos of the elections delayed our diplomatic efforts. Now there are only two Rumberg diplomatic missions left in Swordland. One is the consulate in Dare, and the other is the embassy in Holsword. Um... I don't think they're bluffing. See, that's kind of the scary thing. I don't think they're bluffing. But we're also very smaller than them, so they can kind of push us around a little bit. Um, we are accustomed to the usual rhetoric, but this is far more serious. 
They are playing with fire. Look at what the well and destabilization has done to the region. Sardland breaking apart would tear Mercopia apart. In my entire career, I have never seen our Rumberg relations suffer this much. The previous low point was the annexation of Dome. Joseph Lancey was furious. He barely kept himself from slamming the desk. There are worrying developments like the smuggled arms in the buildup near the border. Our military must be buffed up to stand against the regional power like Rumberg. We either respond to this aggressive act with diplomatic condemnation, or we retaliate by closing our consulate and dome. I want to say that an escalation would be risky this early in our presidency. We should focus on creating a negative image of Rumberg in the international scene. The people of Swordland must be protected, no matter the cost. I say we respond equally. Hmm... Well, I don't think we can stand up to them. See, this is kind of the issue, right? Is that, uh, like, Yosef, whoops, like, Yosef does kind of make a point in a way. We close our, uh, our uh, consulate, but, but at the same time, you know, they probably want us to do that. Like, see, I feel like this is all calculated on their part. Because they want a reason to invade us. And they're closing the consulate saying, hey, security is kind of weak. You guys had an MP assassinated. We just want to be careful. So they will be the victims if we retaliate by closing. Write an official diplomatic response condemning this unreasonable act. Declare that Rumberg aims to destabilize Swordland and the region. As you wish, Mr. President. I shall begin work by immediately informing the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Swaying the international stage is the key in long-term strategy. I wish we had reacted more strongly. If we don't confront them, they will keep escalating the situation. If we do confront them without allies, Yosef, we're probably dead. I hope you realize that. I, on the other hand, am glad that we are taking the more cautious route, so everybody agrees with me apart from Yosef. We should move on to the new trade initiative. Our primary goal will be, to, will be to successfully sign a trade agreement with one of our smaller neighbors. We have two options with our trade initiative. Start of new negotiations with our old partner, Agnolia, and forming a new cooperation with Wellen. Um, I think Agnolia, honestly, just knowing everything that I know, I feel like Agnolia is the better way to go. Especially since they will be probably way more willing to help us against uh, Rumberg. But tell me about the trade deal with Agnolia. First off, the reason behind this option is more diplomatic than economic. Although, of course, we can't forego the added economic value. Agnolia is an old ally and a valuable trade partner. The point where we're at with the early negotiations is around the steel trade. They're demanding that we buy their steel for a higher price. That is because they think that the deal is far too unbalanced as it is. Their second main demand is a privileged access to our agricultural market. If we are to fulfill their demands, in return, they are offering a full alliance with Swordland against Rumberg. That sounds good. That sounds good to me, to be honest. I mean, we'll pay more, but in the end, I think it's better. Looking at the current advances of Rumberg near our borders, having a coalition against Rumberg would prove extremely useful. Obviously, there will be consequences for entering a full alliance, mainly the issues around the hey, the Helgi Islands. Vogsland has clear intention on taking over the island one way or another, and entering a military alliance with Agnolia will make them furious. I want to state my support for the decision to stick to our old ally, Agnolia. Even though I disagree with their demand to relax immigration, we have cooperated with them on many issues in the past. Like, that's also kind of a thing too, right? Like, it'd be kind of like if Canada and the US were suddenly like... Nah, we're we're not gonna trade with you anymore, right? Like that would seem like a pretty big slap in the face to either country, you know. Agnolia is a solid partner for us. David and the president worked on the previous comprehensive trade agreement in the '30s. There are obviously subjects that we would still need to tackle, like our economies, the traded goods, and what to do with immigration. My opinion is that this is a good deal, and we should go for it. 
The new Agnolian Prime Minister is trying to improve the existing relationship. The downside is that we would need to make concessions. A reality of any trade deal. I mean, I would be open to creating a new agreement that would satisfy all sides. I think what they want is fair. That would be the best outcome. If you decide that Agnolia is a good option, another point is that they have a very democratic system. Excuse me. After the recent elections, the PM has a mandate to arrange a fairer deal with us. Martin Van Horten also is an avid supporter of relaxed immigration, so everything we want. Since we said we will keep immigration relaxed, it will help us. Starting the highway construction in England plays a part, too. Yeah, so literally everything we've done just kind of helps. It pushes us towards um, England. Uh, not England, um, Ag Agnolia. Regardless, if we are going to increase our regional influence to previous levels, we might need to make amends with our neighbors. Ultimately, the decision will be up to you, as always. Yeah, tell me about the trade deal with Wellen. I, I want to hear how badly this could go. Dealing with a fractured country like Wellen has its positives and negatives. Although it will be lucrative in short term, there are risks associated with dealing with such a country. They are proposing co-investment projects on a no-tariff agreement. Mm. They are also offering oil in return for attracting foreign capital interests from Swordland. However, it is possible that there will be international ramifications if we get closer with a country like Wellen. All in all, this is a very lucrative deal for us, however, we need to think about the consequences. I certainly don't support the decision to become friendlier with Wellen. We carried their burdens for decades, their migrants flooded our country, and now they are expecting a deal from us? Maintaining influence with Wellen could prove useful. Yes, it is risky, but think about our influence on an undeveloped, underdeveloped region like that. We could also sell more products and enter their market easily. I am of the opinion that it is simply too risky. Yes, we would gain resources and immediate capital, but I'm afraid of the consequences. You may be right, it's risky. I tend to agree. If we wish to go forward with the deal when the time comes, there's a topic of immigration to consider. Wichter Smolak is a known isolationist. Our promise to keep our immigration policy relaxed will not help at all. He blames us for bringing Western interests in the region. He also doesn't want his political opponents to flee here. I personally don't like the idea of getting too close to Wellen. Me too. Agreed. I still think we should give it a try. So Peter is the only one that's saying, oh, we should maybe give it a try. Hmm. Our campaign promise to steer Swordland towards West and Arcasia will have an effect on the negotiations. Especially with Wellen. As you know, the current affairs of Wellen are partly a result of United Contana's support of Wichter Smolak. This will be a problem, but definitely worth trying. As for Agnolia, this promise had made them cautious, which might make it harder to get a good deal. We also need to consider the effects of our economic doctrine plan. The fact that we are headed towards a market economy will have an influence. Good negotiators optimize the interest, the interests, which makes the difference become trivial, allowing both sides to reach a deal. Very true, Mr. Victor. We have a lot of time to prepare before the scheduled visits to Welland and Agnolia. I believe this gives a brief overview of our current options. Our trade delegation will begin work towards the end of the year. We expect a final negotiation and the signing to happen next year. I'm very much looking forward to visiting Stallport and... Walkowitz? Walklowitz. With party animals like David and Simon. Ha <laughs> ha. Peter laughed. Yosef narrowed his eyes and stared at him. Well, that concludes our meeting, Mr. Rain. Thank you all for coming. I will take my leave then, sir. The meeting, the meeting concluded and the team dispersed. Our diplomatic action plan officially began. So... So, honestly, yeah, I, like, I find it funny that nobody had anything really good to say about the trade with Wellen, apart from Peter. But everybody said Agnolia would probably go with it. So we'll lean towards Agnolia. We'll try to get them on our side. And... 
we could probably convince them that us lying with um, Arcacia might be a good idea. Young Swords member claimed links to the government. A detained Young Swords member in Arvory claimed that he has connections to the government. We have investigated the truth of his claims, but we're not able to find any leads. Investigation ongoing. That could be interesting if we can pin it on the judge. I say pin it, but it probably would be him that's doing it. Uh, decided to release a statement condemning Rumberg. Yes, that we did. Emergency in Andrica. Mayor announces. Troubling news are coming from the mayor of Andrica, who reported that a state of chaos exists in the city and called an emergency directive authorizing him to use his security powers. In an announcement, Mayor Lust said, we are reporting 20 police, uh, uh, bleh, we are reporting 20 police officers heavily wounded. Two police stations burned down and several shot. The city is in a state of emergency and we are trying to restore order. The local Grand Army began assisting the mayor after the emergency request was made. The armed units are now securing critical junctions and key infrastructure like power stations, hospitals, and the municipality building. Local NFP leaders have announced that they will assist the local enforcement with the task of keeping the streets safe by reporting violent dissenters, a statement criticized by a local PFJP official. Okay. The NFP are the Nationalist Front? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, don't like that too much. Welfare issues of Narville. Narville, a city that was once an important trade stop for the Marquean Empire, has been in a steep decline for the last decade. We have uncovered the hard truth from the residents themselves. K.A. 46, a shepherd living near the Cavendir Mountains that did not wish to disclose his real name, has made shocking remarks about the city's and region's lack of healthcare services. He has waited almost five months just to get an appointment in the rural region. Another resident... A farmer, IY, 57, who also did not wish to disclose his name, is living near the outskirts of the Narville. His children, AY, 14, and VY, 16, have to use dangerous mountain paths to walk to their school, located two kilometers away, even in the harshest street seasons. Okay. Unrest continues. The unrest in the streets is continuing, and the tensions between different groups has led to new clashes with hundreds wounded and sometimes several dead a week. Our reporters have interviewed dozens of protest uh, leaders from the regional capitals, revealing different demands from the people. Three subjects stand out. Freedom of expression, democratic change, and economic security. On the other hand, many also want out to pro went out to protest the worsened living conditions under the recession. Every third person our team has talked to mentioned the need for a strengthening of the political system that needs to open up to reflect different opinions. Our eyes on the ground witnessed both peaceful and violent acts. We saw bus stations destroyed, shops burned, and people being carried to the hospitals and ambulances. But there were also calm scenes where police forces allowed peaceful protesters from all sides of the political spectrum to make their voice heard and disperse. Certain cities like Anrica, Izar, uh, Erzeren, and Arvory are much more damaged by the unrest. The overall momentum of the protest don't, doesn't seem likely to stop soon. And the radical. We need democracy. We have long demanded the expansion of civil rights with reforms to modernize our nation. But the previous government blamed the Supreme Court for not allowing, or, or when the previous government blamed the Supreme Court for not allowing the reforms, the opposition was quick to point out the flaws within the Constitution and brought focus on reforming the governmental structures to open way for further civil reforms. Now the reformists have increased in number, and with a president who is seen as a symbol of change in office, we are waiting for results. Now I have the radical more on my side. Whether it is the leader of the opposition or our current president, somebody has to break the cycle and rewrite the Constitution made by Tarkin Sol, whose cult of personality has shaped our current divided na national spirit and must be broken. Will President Reigns stand up to the establishment and listen to the people? We will see. And this is going to be about Rumberg. Sardland condemns closure. The response to the Rumberg consulate closure in Lockhaven was quick. 
The Ministry of Foreign Affairs sent, to strong, sent a strongly worded official diplomatic condemnation letter accusing Remberg of destabilizing Swordland and the surrounding region. Several nations have made supporting statements for Swordland in the Alliance of Nations. It is clear that this letter is not just directed at Remberg, but to all surrounding countries observing the serious situation. And while I have a moment, now uh, that we've gone in a little bit, I do want to point out someone who did give us a follow um, after we did that raid at the end of last stream from this fine person here. Boop. Saturn Gamer. So I just want to say thank you very much for the follow. I hope you will enjoy the stream. I assume you're probably busy today because I assume you're not here. But thank you very much for the follow regardless. And yeah, hopefully we'll see you around. Maybe we can chill, hang out, and all have a good time together.